Hi. The first time nuclear bombs were used was in World War II by the United States on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. This was the only use of nuclear weapons in wartime. However, with 13,000 nuclear warheads on Earth, there are no guarantees that there will not be another nuclear war. Let's consider an example of a bomb with a yield of one megaton, which is 80 times larger than the one dropped on Hiroshima, but much smaller in size than other nuclear bombs. If this bomb were to fall on a city during the day, anyone looking at it from a distance of 21 kilometers would experience temporary blindness due to the intensity of the light. But if it fell during the night, the distance would be 84 kilometers. Additionally, all people in close proximity to the explosion site would suffer burns. At a distance of 11 kilometers, the burns would be first degree, while at 10 kilometers, they would be second degree. At 8 kilometers, the burns would be third degree, which is the most severe, and without prompt medical attention, the patient would likely die. Furthermore, most of the energy produced by a nuclear bomb is released as an intense blast of air, which can travel long distances, causing rapid changes in air pressure that destroy anything in its path. Within a radius of 6 kilometers from the explosion site, wind speeds could reach 255 kilometers per hour, but within a radius of one kilometer, the atmospheric pressure would be four times higher than normal, and wind speeds would reach 756 kilometers per hour. While the human body can withstand the pressure, the high wind speeds would destroy many buildings, and most deaths would occur from building collapses or flying debris that would impact people at high speeds. All this destruction from a one megaton bomb. Now imagine the largest nuclear bomb ever tested, with a yield of 50 megatons. It was tested on a remote island in Russia and is estimated to be 3,330 times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. All of this is for people in close proximity to the explosion. But even if someone is lucky enough to be far from the blast site, they would still encounter terrifying problems. The person who manages to escape the explosion will be exposed to a very high amount of radiation. This amount will vary depending on the person's location, whether they are on the street or inside a building, and whether the building is made of wood or cement, and so on. Exposure to a radiation wave of 450 rads can kill a person with a 50% probability, while a dose of 600 rads can kill a person with a 90% probability. If we assume that the radiation dose does not kill the person, unfortunately, they will suffer from severe genetic damage in the long term. Although the body can self-repair about three-quarters of the problems resulting from radiation exposure, the remaining quarter will lead to mutations in future generations and increase the likelihood of cancer. If a person survives the radiation, they will also face other deadly problems, such as nuclear fallout. This refers to the radioactive particles that will be suspended in the atmosphere after the explosion and will eventually fall back to the ground. When a nuclear bomb explodes, it creates a large crater in the ground, and the soil in the crater is ejected into the atmosphere. This soil carries radiation and can travel hundreds of kilometers before reaching the ground. The bigger problem is that these particles cannot be seen with the naked eye, but fortunately, the radiation weakens quickly. Within just two weeks, the radiation level drops to 1% and decreases significantly from the time of the explosion. For this reason, in the event of a nuclear explosion, people should seek shelter in underground bunkers for at least two weeks. Imagine all this destruction and death, and we are talking about just one nuclear bomb. What would happen to the world if a global nuclear war broke out? In all likelihood, smaller bombs like the ones dropped on Hiroshima would be used. If we assume that 100 out of the 13,000 bombs were used, those 100 bombs would release 5 million tons of black carbon into the atmosphere, which would reduce global rainfall by 9%. My friend, this percentage should not be underestimated as it is capable of spoiling all agricultural crops, leading to a global famine. And then a quarter of the world's population would die. All of this. And we are only talking about small nuclear explosions. Imagine the effects of larger ones. We hope that such a scenario does not occur. And with that, our discussion comes to an end. Don't forget to like and subscribe to receive updates. Goodbye.